It is currently the morning of the 20th of March, 2021. And the synoptic setup here across the Western Pacific, what I mean by that, just the general weather pattern, uh, it, dare I say it's almost... December or January like and what I mean by that we have a deep cold front back towards the east almost a, a sheer line extending across the Philippines into a southern Vietnam bringing some uh, afternoon showers really the last few days they have truly been firing up some pretty heavy stuff there we have a stationary front which almost the start of the spring rainy season front though back towards the north here's the deal though that's going to dip towards the south and it eventually it's going to bring us another nice cool surge or dare I say cold surge as we go ahead into the early part of this upcoming week. The shear though associated with this almost winter weather pattern is really going to destroy any tropical threat in the near term. So I know we have a tropical wave out there south of Guam. I'm not terribly worried about it at this time. I think the afternoon showers with this shear line <clears throat> not only now, but also with the next one with the upcoming cold surge as we go ahead in the Monday and the Tuesday is really going to be the big topic here in this update. So let's break it down. So what's going on right now? Well, here on our Saturday morning, like I mentioned, we have our cold front back towards the east and kind of that line that's extending off of it, the surface based trough back here towards the west across the Philippines with those afternoon showers. Been seeing some decent showers also into Japan, even coming down pretty heavy at times across the western slopes of the Japanese Alps. Some flood advisories have been issued there uh, as well here on your Saturday over towards Sunday. So you know, always be aware of that and be weather ready if you're out here in Japan. But here's the big thing that's controlling the upcoming weather pattern. Here on Saturday, and as we go ahead into Sunday, this is going to start to shift towards the south. The pressure gradient out ahead of this high pressure is going to butt up against our little kind of surface trough back down here towards the south. And look at these lines right in here. These isobaric lines indicate basically tightening of pressure gradient, tightening of the wind gradient as well. And it's first going to get breezy here as we go ahead into Sunday for Okinawa eastern areas of Taiwan, northern areas of the Philippines, and eventually we'll start to see even some breezy conditions across northern portions of Vietnam as well. And plus, we get that interaction with that cool northerly wind. Butting up against the easterlies means afternoon showers and thunderstorms yet again on Monday and the Tuesday for central areas of Luzon as well. So basically another setup with this shear line as that high pressure moves towards the south. Good news by mid and latter part of the week. I expect this gradient to lessen. That cooler air will be introduced. Maybe those afternoon thunderstorms might take a little bit of a settle here. I do also want to take this moment to remind you, uh, please check out our Patreon here at Western Pacific Weather. I'll put a link down below. I can't thank everybody enough who has been helping out here. And uh, yeah, just go ahead and check that out. All right, let's take a look at the wind forecast here for Sunday evening into Okinawa because that pressure gradient comes down. This is one of the things. <clears throat> Those winds are really going to start to pick up. Look at this. This is indicating 30, 40 kilometer per hour gusts Sunday night. We always joke about trampolines flying with the U.S. military out there. It seems like all of them owned trampolines. Well, Sunday afternoon through Monday evening. Uh, it's one of those days where you might want to tie down the trampoline just a little bit here. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to fly across town, but definitely could move about the yard here if you get the proper wind gusts coming through with this cold surge. It's not typhoon-like, so I'm not saying, you know, get the, the, the sandbags out or anything like that, but uh, definitely going to be some pretty good wind associated with it blowing across Naha here by Sunday evening through Monday. Further towards the south. Talking about uh, the Luzon Strait, northern areas of Luzon from Apari up. Uh, take a look at some of these wind gusts out here in Kalayan. Hope I'm saying that right. Uh, gusts, whoo boy, 60 to 70 kilometer per hour gust funneling through the Luzon Strait there. That, here's the deal though. I've never been to these islands out here, uh, but I have seen the pictures and my goodness, they are prepared for typhoons there this is right in the middle of typhoon alley so you know you're looking at the 60 to 70 kilometer per hour gust and you're like whoo that's windy but for them it's it's definitely a brisk march day let's just say that i wouldn't be heading out to the beach or anything but here's the deal that is going to funnel further down towards the south so much of the eastern seaboard of luzon <clears throat> here on monday into tuesday is really going to be seeing one windy conditions and two these scattered showers lining up along the eastern seaboard of the Sierra Madre Mountains and 
that moisture is going to go pulling across towards the west here, eastern areas of Vietnam. Look at this, showers lining up. We got about kind of a coastal plain here in Vietnam, extends about 50 to 100 km per hour in, kilometers inland, and then you got a mountain range right in there, and that's going to pile up along those mountains there along the east coast, and definitely going to see those showers pile up there. And look exactly what I'm talking about right there, the showers piling up. This is indicating some areas 50 to 100 millimeters thanks to this surge over the next five days. Similar on the east coast of the Philippines. Got a few afternoon showers there in the Cagayan Valley. But really, it's all that moisture getting thrusted with the easterly winds up the slopes there along the hills here in the Philippines that's going to help enhance those showers. That's really the big topic. Hey, if you're a boater, maybe a fisherman, this is another thing. We know this, but it's just a reminder. When we get a cold surge, the surf is up and the waves are going to be high. I mean, these red indicating 15, 20 foot seas out here as well. So, yeah, whoo, the entire basin here is going to be looking at just bleh, rough stuff. And the northeast out here in the Philippine Sea and northeastern Luzon, uh, I would not, I would not want to be on any sort of vessel, even a larger one. Uh, it'd definitely be a rough day uh, out here. All right, my main point, if you're still watching, my goodness, if you're still watching, comment. I always say that, but I'm, I'm always curious what you guys, uh, if you catch that, you know, <laughs> afternoon thunderstorms in Luzon, cold surge this weekend, showers from Luzon through Vietnam, though, as we go ahead into the early part of this upcoming week. All right, let's talk about some other things here as well. Uh, March, we are still in March. We're heading into April, but still in March. And long range, uh, we were been talking about the potential for a low pressure area. It looks like that's not going to be the case. And it doesn't surprise me. When we ever talk about long range forecast in March, or April for that matter, it, you would have to expect a tropical wave to move across the Philippines in the southern portions of a size, like we just seen with our last one, or pull out here towards Guam. It looks like the energy is going to kind of get squeezed with that shear line in the upcoming front and get pulled north, turn into really nothing. But here's the thing. I've shown this in the last few updates. 73 years, only 22, 22 out of 73 years, 22 named storm systems have moved into the Philippine area of responsibility during the month of March. Now, I thought that maybe the La Nina advisory would compensate for that, and that's one reason why we do have some tropical waves coming through. And what I mean by La Nina advisory is the fact that, yeah, the, the, the sea surface temperatures off the east coast of the Philippines are above average, so that could provide more energy. But the shear, especially with this upcoming cold surge, the shear is going to absolutely rip apart anything that could potentially develop. Anyways, that's just a little extra information. Hey, please subscribe if you haven't. I know YouTubers say that, and it's really, really annoying, right? It's so redundant, and usually when I get to this page, I notice on my views, people click off. So uh, just stick around for one, for one more minute. Um, <clears throat> yeah, hit that subscribe button. Uh, key thing is watch to this point. <laughs> it, it, it really helps with the algorithm if you watch all the way to the end. So you guys are absolute legends if you are still watching to this point. If you're still watching, take a moment. Please comment what graphic I use in these updates you find the most useful. It could be from the satellite picture from the beginning to kind of just the overall synoptic flow to maybe these wind graphics I've been trying to show lately and the, the, the forecast for the specific areas. Please let me know. I know these updates, like today, is a bit different than Typhoon updates as well. So I'm sure the Typhoon tracks are probably the best and most informative ones. Uh, check out westerpacificweather.com too if you have the time. I have a lot of links there. Pretty much links to everything I use in these updates as well. All right. Thanks for watching. And of course, as always, stay safe out there. Have a fantastic weekend, my friends.